Finally, a game where we saw a fight from the goddamn Warriors, man. We scored 140 points and much better effort tonight. Yeah, we still gave up 134 defensively and the defense has a long ways to go, but hey, at least we won and it was uh, somewhat... Well, it, the second half was really satisfying. Third quarter, Warriors showed up today. Kuminga went off, Wiggins went off, Steph showed out in the fourth quarter, Clay went off in the third quarter, so there were... A lot of fun signs, at least today in this game, and I'll take what I can get. Let's talk about the first story of this game being Wiggins inserted back into the starting lineup for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, Wiggins was back into the starting lineup, Saric and Looney in the backcourt. Uh, and yeah, we were at least much bigger. And that's, of course, a good sign. Kuminga back to the bench, Pojemski back to the bench. And they looked solid, right? Saric could space the floor, uh, help out at least with his size, even though defensively he obviously has some limitations. But he always tries as hard as he can, man. That's what you can count for from Dario Saric. And Wiggins back in the starting lineup. I do wonder if he was put in there to increase his trade value. And it worked tonight if that was the reason. But it also makes you remember how good he can be when he's on and how hard it is to actually find a player of his skill set, right? Of his athleticism, defense, uh, how, la, 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 la. attacking the paint. Actually, when he shoots it well, right, he, he is on when he's on. But this season, we have seen this story too many times. But today, he was great. He obviously looked as engaged as ever. The effort was there on both ends of the floor. You saw him actually hit some jumpers today more in rhythm more attacking it's still not as aggressive as you would like the Wiggins to be but still it was a great sign and he was playmaking his ass off also today so that was beautiful to see and yeah defensively of course we are still not great like I said that's the that's the biggest all arching story right and it starts at the top man Steph defensively has been awful this season I will not take anything else he just doesn't have it as much as he had the previous years and it's, of course, much harder with Draymond missing a lot and, you know, teams being way more faster and we're so slow and old and he can get attacked on those runouts after we score a basket, right? So it's a lot of that. Then the closeouts have been bad from him and maybe even throughout the roster. So we'll have to wait and see how Draymond's return helps everything. Uh, we should not overhelp as much as we do now with Draymond in there, but who knows? because we always have been that type of team to overload the paint as much as possible because we don't have the size, even though today we did have it and we still kind of did it. Uh, for example, when you saw Kobe White shooting lights out and lighting us up in the first half and, and at the end of the second quarter, we still did not put a, you know, face guard him and he still lit us up <laughs> for some reason, but that's what the Warriors just do, I suppose. And then there was the halftime ring of honor where they booed Jerry Krause's uh, wife, Jerry Krause, of course, the former general manager of the Bulls, who helped put together one of the best dynasties ever in sports, really. And it was distasteful, it was nasty to see, unfortunately. Uh, that's just what it is, right? That's how he was painted in the last dance as the guy that broke them off. But he also, you know, it's easy to forget them that he was the guy that put this all, all of this together, really. And he just wanted to break up an old team, really. So, hey, it is what it is. But karma hit them maybe a little because, well, the Warriors came out strong as hell in the second half. Not to make it really about them, eh, because it's not really about them, right? It's one of. It's just so sad to see because, you know, he's no longer with us. Then you have his wife there for him, and he just blew him, uh, essentially her. It's this taste. It's it's just nasty. There's no other way to put it. It. It, it it's horrible and i'll leave it at that because there's not much more else you can say man it, it's just sad to see that's all anyway uh second half came out and hey clay came out hot he was torch scorching hot he made like four threes three threes early on in the second quarter wiggins continued playing well um Looney and Saric did some good things. Kuminga came in off the bench and he was sensational today in both uh, the first half and the third quarter. In the first half, he 
could not miss, made two threes, which was great to see after him not being able to really hit them lately. He was really aggressive at the right time. He tried more communication on defense. There are still a lot of miscues from him and within him on this roster, but he at least, you know, is, you know, I see the signs of improvement and the willingness to, you know, do all of these things. I know you could say that he should be doing this all the time, but hey, changing your mindset and changing the ways you do things, it's not as easy, right? Not for, a, you know, for literally everyone is hard. And it's really funny, right? Wiggins having a great game, Kuminga having a great game. And before we get into the second half where we took off, uh, they both were finally having a good game together. Yeah, we did not see them both together on the same floor, but they were both having a good game. And you figured, hey, this is the game to give him a shot. Moody is out. Uh, there are no players you can really play there. But here come, here came Jerome fucking Robinson. And when I saw him on the floor, I was like, I cannot be serious, man. Like, I know Kuminga and Wiggins have been awful, but this is finally probably the first game this season we saw both, both of them actually play well. So just play them together and try it. If it's awful, hey, you know you can play it in the second half. Yet, we unfortunately played Jerome Robinson and it was it was horrible. Uh, it was just it was just awful. And I hope he finds himself, you know, somewhere, even if it's with us. I hope so, but I do not know <laughs> what else to say, man. I don't want to see Jerome Robinson on the floor unless we have, like, five injuries. Um, but thankfully, Steve Kerr finally gave Kuminga and Wiggins another shot to play together, and they finally played well together today. Well off of each other. It was great to see them create off of each other and actually play well together, even, you know, offensively and defensively. And the second half, it was great to see Kuminga just take over in that third quarter. Steph was hyped for him as much as I was here at my couch. And like I said, Clay was on a heater in the second half. He loves to play in the Chica in Chicago, man. He just loves that place. And he also was great playmaking wise today. Hashtag claymaking, right? He has a real connection with Trace, his gravity on those pick and rolls. And Trace with, you know, when he slips, Clay, Clay was able to create so much, so many good shots at the rim for him. And Trace did a really good job today. Clay just had a good all-around game and it was great to see. Steph, despite not being able to hit anything, was at least having a great playmaking game. We had like 39 assists and 5 turnovers today. It was probably our best game this season with the ball in terms of assists to turnovers ratios and just taking care of the ball. That's the word I'm looking for. And hey, Steph... Despite st clearly struggling with his shot, woke up in the fourth quarter and went went off in that <laughs> at the end of the game in the clutch to take us home. And it was you know nice to see him get going. Hopefully, it's a sign of things to come for him. And you saw him at least give much better effort defensively than he has been giving lately. So better energy today. Shout out Dario, Loon, Wiggins, pretty much everyone that played besides Jerome Robinson today. Uh, everyone brought a little something. It was not pretty right, 134 points from Chicago is tough, but they're one of the hotter teams in the league this, at this point because they really found themselves after Zach Levine's first injury. He is back and playing better, uh, better than he did before the injury, more within the team. So it is a good win against a team that is clearly on the up, uh, that was clearly on the up, and we torched them offensively. And our defense is that just does not have the personnel right now, so offense is what we have to lean on, really. And a win is a win. I will not hold out hope. I, I will I will hold out hope, because that's the most... What can I say? That's the most uh, rational thing to do, man. Hold out hope. That Wiggins... We will see Wiggins play like this every game. But I will not obviously count on it. It would be foolish. But I will hold out hope that Wiggins snapped it, man. It was more of a mental thing, and he finally snapped it, and will go back to seeing the good old Wiggins. And if not, at least he can maybe up his trade value. <laughs> um, yeah. And I still don't want to see Kuminga go, but it feels like if really uh, we trust the core, we will have to let go of Kuminga to not only free him from this system, and I think he will thrive whenever he goes, but to get the high-end talent that we need right now. But we'll see, man. We'll see. We play the Bucks today on a back-to-back. Uh, we will see which Warriors show up. 
uh, it is a back to back in Milwaukee who just blew out the Celtics like yesterday. So we'll see. But their defense is gettable almost as much as ours. So of course the size will be an issue. We will defend Giannis with Draymond out. Uh, Brook Lopez, Bobby Portis in there. Uh, Dame of course still you know they have some good shooters. It should be a shootout if we have the energy for it. But we'll see if he can keep up tomorrow. Nonetheless, as always, be kind to yourself and to others. And love and be, baby.